Hi, this is part two of day 55, and we're reading in Numbers, and we're reading uh, chapter 11, and we're reading from verse, uh, where was that? Verse 12. No, verse 13. Um, the people are complaining about food, that they're not, that they're not happy with the food in the wilderness. And so they're complaining. And so Moses goes to God. We're going to get meat for all these people. They keep wailing to me. Give us meat to eat. Cannot carry, I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you are going to treat me, put me to death right now. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not let my face my own room. Do not let me face my own room. Get up, get the get Lord up. said to Moses, bring my Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will, and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed, and if only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day, for two days, for five days, for twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils, and you loathe it, because you have rejected the Lord, who is among you, and have wailed before him, saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? You know what? When Moses was grumbling about the burden, it makes me think of you sometimes. <coughs> like you, you me? Work, yeah. Every time he has to work overtime to try to catch up to get money to fix the car, or fix the house, or fix the furnace, he says, oh, Lord, I can't handle this. Now. Every time? Not every time. This is just over. I'm wore out, God. <laughs> When's everything going to stop quiet. <laughs> But Moses said, Here I am among 600,000 men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? You will now see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand among the tent, around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to the tent, and he took up the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Midad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Ildad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to camp. Verse 31. Now a wind went out from the Lord and drove quail in from the sea. It brought them down all around the camp to about three feet above the ground. As far as days walk in any direction, all that day and night, and all the next day, the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than ten homers. Then they spread them out all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burnt against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore the place was named Kabroth, Hatabah because they had buried the people who had craved other food. From Kebroth, Havva, the people traveled to Hazaroth and stayed there. Uh, 
love of God is quite a strong disciplinarian. Uh, maybe there's a moral to this story. <laughs> Be content where you're at. Yeah, I think so. Just deal with our. Okay. Mark chapter 5. Verses 1 to 20. Now I get to read. And it's called The Healing of a Demon Possessed Man. They went, my Bible's getting all tattered. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasians. When Jesus got over the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons off on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs, and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. It kind of reminds me of kids today. They're always like on YouTube, like being angry, crying out, and they're cutting themselves. They're cutting Some themselves. Do. Well, not all of them. Yeah, some do. Like we, we, we see shows on Dr. Phil about these kids. When he saw Jesus from the distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? The man, my name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pig was feeding in the nearby hillside. The, demon, the demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave the region. How far did we go? And Jesus was getting into the boat the man who had been demon possessed begged him to go with him. Begged Jesus to speak to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis, Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. That's kind of what we're supposed to do, I think, when we are healing. I think we're supposed to, like, we went Sunday night to a, a little church in Southport, and a friend of ours who we prayed, well, everybody prayed for her about a year ago, um, she was amazingly healed of cancer. It was all through her, like every part of her body. And she wanted to go and give testimony to the goodness of God and what he's done. And, um, and, you know, I think we were supposed to. I think in a day and age when you turn the TV on and all the news is bad news, it's really important that when God answers our prayers and does something amazing, I think that's something we need to talk about. I think we need to share about it. We need to tell people about it. I, I don't know if I would use the word amazing, but I am rejoicing in my healing as uh, God healed my heart. That's pretty amazing. Oh, 15 years ago now, and I was laying on a pillow the other night and I could feel my heart beating and it was just beating absolutely perfect because before that before Jesus healed me I had my heart would miss a beat and then it would rapid and catch up and then go okay for a little bit and miss a beat and my hands were cold because my circulation was poor and my feet were cold but now then it says like a nice warm hands when I give her back the Lord's healed me of many, many things. I keep journals, thank goodness. And if I don't instill enough faith in my children through my living testimony, maybe when they're packing up all my stuff someday when I've gone on to be in the presence of God, 
they'll be reminded of God's amazing love and, and all the miracles through my life with raising my children and the healings and answers to prayer. It, it's just been amazing. If we had time, I'd tell you more about it. But I think maybe our time might be running out. I'm not sure. I, I forgot to set a clock. So maybe we'll just say a quick prayer and sing a few songs and when we're done, we're done. In your church. I promise. Father in heaven, we rejoice in the awesome privilege of being your son and yes. your daughter. We are excited, Lord, when we read in the Old Testament that you did so much for those people mm -hmm. and you just required them to be obedient to you and you would bless them beyond measure that they could even imagine and yet they were so rebellious but you know what I used to say Lord how could those people be so rebellious in the midst of all your blessing them and then you remind me that I get rebellious at times too and so I have to repent too, just like what they did. And thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestow unto us, mm -hmm. that you give unto us day by day. And we thank you for your healing touch you do in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Lord, for your daily provision that you give unto us. And we just pray, Lord, that anyone who's listening tonight, Lord, that they will call upon you in the time of trouble and that they will see you do great and mighty things for them. And Lord, we just pray that you would reveal yourself to us through your word as we read it day by day. And thank you for this awesome privilege. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about Jesus loves me? Can I say that? <clears throat> and nobody loves me like Jesus loves me. Mm, I wonder what that song would sound like. Just hold on, hold on. I'll turn off button on it. Right? No, that's why I said you gotta keep playing and singing. Well, what's what's with that? It's a new program somehow. And how long is it going out? Don't show the light to the ceiling. Just send it down and play a few more songs and then it's done. Down no more. <laughs> there you go. I don't see your people. You're you're hooked in. YouTube says they want you to sing a little song. Yeah. I wonder if they've given us that long. Yeah. Thank you. Every time she comes over, we have music night. She reminds me that she hates drums. <laughs> oh, how good. Uh, what is this? I don't know what the song is. Um. You're just going to have to double this over here because I don't know. Can't <laughs> You're going to have to. Oh, you can't cut it I out. can't double. You can too. You can cut it out. No, I can't. <laughs> I can, but it's really hard to clear when I was old. I'll do How about it. Jesus' name above all things? That's why we have books. <laughs> They just do a whole page and a half of it. Pretty. Pretty. Here, give me those. Let's take a 
Jesus, Jesus, name of the Lord.